All right, today we're going to be looking at the epiphyseal plate, also known as the growth plate, found on uh, long bones. And we're also going to look at the different types of epiphyseal injuries, and we'll see an example of an epiphyseal injury. All right, so there's four main types of bones. You have uh, long bones. These would be like your femur or your humerus. Bones found in the, in the arms or legs. The, they're longer than they are wide. And then you have short bones. Short bones are defined as being approximately as wide as they are long. Uh, these would be bones like your carpals or tarsals, the, the bones of the hand. And then the third type is the irregular bones. These are bones found in the body that don't really fall into any of the other categories because they have an odd shape. Things like your uh, vertebrae would be an irregular bone. And the last one is uh, flat bones. Flat bones are just like they sound, they're flat plates. Uh, an example of this would be a skull bone or even uh, your shoulder blade or the scapula. You're looking at the, a diagram of a long bone. At both ends, there's an epiphyseal plate. That's where the growth plate is. That's where the bone's going to lengthen. Um, at both heads, both heads are called epiphyses, and the shaft in the middle is the diaphysis. All right, and epiphyseal plates are present only in children that haven't grown to full size yet. Uh, when a child has grown to, to adulthood and has reached its full size, the epiphyseal plates will disappear and leave what's called an epiphyseal line. All right, on this slide, we're taking a look at the epiphyseal plate a little bit closer. You can see it at a cellular level. There's uh, five different zones in the epiphyseal plate. The first zone is the resting zone. Uh, this is the layer that's uh, the nearest to the epiphyses, and it just consists of... Uh, Resting inactive chondrocytes. Chondrocytes are just uh, cartilage cells. The next zone is the zone of proliferation. Now, this is where the chondrocytes undergo mitosis or cell division. And since the cells in this area are dividing, they're working to push the epiphyses further away from the diaphysis. And this is what's really going to lengthen the bone. The next zone is the zone of hypertrophy. Uh, Chondrocytes here aren't dividing, but they're beginning hypertrophy, which is the enlargement of these cells. You can tell that these cells are in the hypertrophic zone are a lot larger than the cells in the rest of the epiphyseal plate. The next zone is the zone of calcification. This is where the chondrocytes begin apoptosis, or programmed cell death, and these cells are cal calcified. The next zone is the zone of ossification. Ossification is another word for bone growth. Uh, in this area, this is where the osteoclasts are going to enter from the diaphysis into the epiphyseal plate and break down the, the dead chondrocytes so that osteoblasts can come in and lay new bone matrix and replace the dead, the dead cartilage with bone. Uh, since the epiphyseal plate contains mostly cartilage, it's pretty weak. It's the weakest part of the long bone, and so a lot of fractures occur in this area. Uh, in the next slide, we're going to go over the five different types of uh, of uh, epiphyseal plate injuries. In this slide we're looking at the five different types of epiphyseal injuries. The first type, uh, the epiphyses slips off the end of the shaft. Uh, the prognosis for this kind of injury is usually pretty good. Um, these injuries occur early at birth or in early childhood. In the second type, the line of separation runs through part of the epiphyseal plate and then out through the diaphysis shaft where it produces a characteristic triangu triangular fragment. This is a common epiphyseal injury, and it happens particularly at the distal end of the radius. The third type of fracture extends from the joint surface into the epiphyseal line, and then through part of the diaphysis. These are rare injury injuries, and they occur usually at the ends of a tibia. Accurate realignment is essential to restore a smooth joint surface and align the epiphyseal plates and then an open operation may be necessary in these types of fractures. The fourth type of uh, epiphyseal injuries is where the epiphyses and part of the shaft split. Um, this happens particularly at the lateral condyle of the humerus. Perfect uh, realignment is essential to treatment and a lot of times an open surgery is required to treat these types of injuries. The fifth type of injury is where the epiphyseal plate is crushed. A lot of times this happens at the ankle or the knee. Uh, since the epiphyseal plate is crushed, it causes at least part of the epiphyseal plate to close early. Prognosis for type 1 and type 2 usually isn't too bad. Uh, realignment isn't usually an issue too bad. 
but in the third, fourth, and fifth, uh, the prognosis is is a lot is a lot worse because you'll have problems with realigning the physial plate perfectly. Um, as you can see in the the type four picture, the physial plate is misaligned, and in the type five, the physial plate is crushed on that left side, and it's caused the right side to actually grow further than the the left side, and it's caused the bone to grow unevenly. You can also see that in the type 4, the bone's grown more on the left side than the right side. So in the type 1 and type 2 injuries, you can see that the epiphyseal plate is intact. It's not broken. It's all in one piece. And then in 3, 4, and 5, the epiphyseal plate is, is damaged and it's separated from one another. And then in the third one, it's separated from the bottom right. You can see that even if they are to realign it, the, the epiphyseal plate will never be perfectly realigned. Uh, same situation is in t uh, type 4. You can see, as I said earlier, the left side has grown a, a little bit more than the right side. And then in type 5, the left side was crushed and it, it caused the physical plate to close early. And so the right side has grown out more. So basically, to sum it up, if, if there's a fracture and that physical plate is damaged, that's where you're going to have problems with, uh, with bone growth because that physical plate won't be aligned and it'll grow unevenly or if it's damaged too much it won't grow at all on that side. Now we're going to be looking at an example of an epiphyseal plate injury. Uh, for this first example we're going to show you uh, Brandon falling off his skateboard the correct way. He's going to roll his body and absorb the, the shock with, with his body rather than falling on his arm. Now that we've watched Brandon fall the correct way, let's watch him fall the wrong way. In this next clip, he's going to fall and note how he, he braces himself with his arm. This is bad because it's going to uh, concentrate all the impact onto his arm and it's actually going to result in it, him getting an epiphyseal plate injury in his ulna. Now you're looking at Brandon's x-ray. As you can see on his right hand, that's where the fracture is. It's on the bone on the right side. You see that large gap right there? It's the bone on the right side on the image on the right. Now if you compare that to the image on the left, the same bone, the one that's on the outside, this is going to be on the left side now, there's not as much of a gap because that bone is intact. Now looking back at the right side, that gap, that's where his uh, distal ulnar epiphyseal plate is. This is a type 1 fracture or type 1 epiphyseal plate injury where the epiphyses has slipped off the end of the shaft and there's no fracture in his epiphyseal plate, his epiphyseal plate is still intact so the doctor should be able to realign this and um, the prognosis is good because the epiphyseal plate is not damaged he shouldn't have any issues with later bone growth luckily because this is a type 1 fracture that's all we have for you today this has been uh, going over epiphyseal plates or growth plates and the epiphyseal plate injuries that occur at these areas.